If you want to hear about my origins experience, then stick around. Hi there, it's Ilen with another video and I am finally, after over 45 days, ready to talk to you about the Origins skincare line, at least the 10 net 8 products that I ended up using. And I say net 8 because there are two that were duplicates in the two sets that I used. If you want to see my intro to it, including what the sets looked like, I will put the original video right here. I want to talk products and I'm going to go from least appreciated to most appreciated out of the, let's call it eight products that I used. And I'll tell you which ones were the duplicates. I will say right off the hop, there is one product that I did not use and I said that I would not use it. And it was the Origins Spot Remover, I think it was, a little blue container. I don't really have any blemishes on my face that I would need to treat with that product. It's more for acne prone skin. And so I handed it off to a friend of mine, Chels, who I invited to, to use it but I just handed it off recently. If I get an update on whether she liked the product or not, I will kind of sneak it into a future video, but I suspect I won't hear about it for a while because I just kept forgetting handing it over to her. And I know 45 days, you would have thought I would have found a time, but with a, just a little container, it's just really easy for it to kind of go by the wayside. And that's what happened. I mean, it was, it's a, Looks like it would last a long time because you don't need a lot for, of that product. But anyway, I don't, I, I'll just move on because I don't have anything to say about it. I just wanted to let you know that I had not used it, but passed it along as I said I would. I'm going to go with the two products as well that I don't have an opinion on other than an opinion on the overall category. This one is a Mega Mushroom Relief and Resilience Mask which I used once, and also the active charcoal mask to clear pores, used once. I don't care about masks like this. The only masks that I care about putting on are for entertainment purposes on this channel. I'll put one of those right here. I don't like masks unless they are masks that are really just a cream that you have on overnight that you then wash your face um, the next morning. Those are fine. To me, there's no difference between a mask like that and an overnight cream, and I will wear them. I find masking annoying, messy, and unnecessary if we have our other skincare regimen. If you have a lot of trouble with your skin, I can understand how some masks can be soothing, maybe life-changing from a beauty perspective. I, I don't disagree that there are a lot of good uses for masks. I personally don't appreciate them and therefore don't look for them. So any mask that ends up being a sample, like included in a sample set, will automatically get the side eye from me. Just, it's just the way it is. So I don't have anything great to say about this. I don't tend to have, the charcoal mask is to clear pores. I don't have clogged pores. It's not an issue for me. So I couldn't really tell you what I thought. This one, the soothing face mask, the next, it was 10, 10 minutes, I think. Yeah, unwind for 10 minutes, tissue off. And this other one was use once a week, um, allow to dry and rinse well. Okay. This one, after the 10 minutes, it said to tissue off. Not good enough. It did not play nice with anything that I did with my face afterwards. And so tissue off, maybe if you're going to bed right after, but then I couldn't do my night skincare. It was I think I needed to know more about it to maybe figure out when in my routine I would do it, but there's no way that I would do it after my nightly skincare. I use a retinol. I didn't know how that stuff would work with this. If you do a pretty heavy night routine, I would say this is probably not a mask for you. Maybe 
if you don't do a night routine and this ends up being your night routine, maybe that would work. I, I don't know enough about masking, frankly. I just was confused about when I could possibly use it. And if I wasn't sure about the, the reason why or the benefits, I didn't understand why I would put it on for 10 minutes, tissue off, and then not be able to do anything right after in the morning because it didn't play well with, with products or at night not understanding how it would fit into my routine. So I, I'm repeating myself, don't like masks. That's all I know about these and we're gonna move on. How about a mask I actually finished? And it's one that fit with what I was saying, which is a mask that you can leave overnight. And this is Drink Up Intensive and it is the Overnight Quenching Mask. And for this one, I put on all of my night skincare. And just before I went to bed, which was a little bit, a little while later, I went with the overnight mask and this, this um, drink up intensive because it seemed to me like an overnight cream, a hydrating boost overnight cream. And indeed, it was very pleasant, and the smell of it still has a little bit of a scent to it, I, even though I got everything out of it. As you can see, I liked it. Because to me, it acted like a cream. It just did. It was fine, and the fact that I could leave it on my face overnight told me it was fine, whereas this other mask that I was supposed to wipe off, 10 minutes later, I didn't know what that meant. That did it have to come off my face or was it just because it was going to be messy on my pillow? I don't know. But this one went into my skin just like any overnight mask. I've used an AHA from Sephora. I've used a couple of other masks that you leave on at night. And yeah, this worked the same. I enjoyed it. I liked the scent. I liked the feel on my skin. And the scent was very mild. It was just not yucky skincare smell, if that makes sense. And I would consider, if it's not too crazy expensive, this mask again, but I do have a couple of other squeezy tubes of the Sephora uh, AHA mask, and I'll, I'll be using that one first before I consider any other overnight mask options. For the rest, I think we'll go in order of application. So I'm going to say, for the morning, I guess, I'm going to say uh, we'll go with a face wash first, and this is the Frothy Face Wash. As you can see, I used all of it up. It had a nice mint smell and feel to it. I just don't know if mint is great for skincare. I mean, it was pleasant to use and maybe a face wash doesn't stay on your skin very long, so it's not a big deal. It was nice to kind of wake me up in the morning, kind of like the minty to toothpaste can do. So I used it up, it was 30 ml or one fluid ounce, and a little bit was all that I needed. It lasted quite a few weeks, and I enjoyed it. Would I pay the price that I suspect this is? Probably not. I don't tend to be a big spender on face wash because as long as it's cleansing my skin, doing what it needs to, I really don't care which brand as long as it is good quality and it's effective in my opinion. So I probably would not purchase this, but for the duration of my use, I enjoyed it. And it had, it was white, creamy and white, and it was, it had a very nice feel on the skin. I, I did enjoy it while I, well, while I had some. The next thing I did, and I had two of these, was use this called the Mega Mushroom Relief and Resilience. It's a toner. And I used all of this bottle and I had another one as well from the other kit, as I said. So a lot of it, and it's probably the product that I was using every day that I ran out of uh, first as far as one bottle and going into the second one. And I thought initially that I was going to keep one of those two bottles for travel, but I was enjoying this toner so much that I just kept using it. And uh, luckily I got another travel bottle for a toner that I absolutely love in a an unexpected gift bag from Shoppers Drug Mart. I'll put that video right here because it was I was so joyful about it and it's a mini travel size and you'll see it in that video. 
I like this product. I wouldn't say that it has displaced my current favorite, which is the Pixie Glow Tonic, but it was, it really was soothing. So it felt so good on the skin. I was applying it with a cotton pad every day and really enjoying it. And what does it say here? Uh, light refreshing treatment lotion rapidly reduces visible redness, restores resilience and hydrates. I did feel like it was very soothing. Again, I don't have a whole lot of difficulty with my skin anymore. I used to have extremely sensitive skin. Uh, if you want to know more about it, if I have cards left, I will put that video right here. I, well, I would actually recommend this, but without having done a value for money on it at this point. And Pixie Glow Tonic is not cheap either. I suspect this one is a mid-range um, in the high-end category. And it is a, if, if you have sensitive skin, I found it very soothing, but I would see if you can um, hear from someone else with sensitive skin and prone to redness to see what that toner did for them. Pleasant to use. Uh, some people talked about the smell being off-putting. I didn't find that it was off-putting at all. I found it overall a very pleasant product and would use again, but like I said, I don't think that it would displace my current favorite. Now let's talk about a more problematic product. I have the Origins Ginseng Refreshing Eye Cream to Brighten and Depuff. This was what I got in one of the sample packs, and this is the one that I received in the other. And this is what you would normally see in the packaging as far as I know. I'll probably show you this one because I can show you the cream. This is what it looks like. And a tiny bit goes so, so far. I'll give you a little bit of a sample from this one because this is the one that I was using. And the amount that I used for both eyes was this much. Tiny, tiny, tiny amount. And I can probably show you on my hand. I'm just closing it up here. Probably show you on my hand. I was using this product until just a few days ago. And I, I'm hoping that you can see the shine that comes off my hand. I put it right here. It's a very shiny product and it did a couple of things. So I would put it, do my skincare, put it uh, on the under eye from here to here because it's supposed to brighten and depuff. So you want to put in the depuff area. And I, a couple of times right at the beginning, did my makeup right, well, right, after I was done my skincare and this was pretty much the last item and so you go into makeup because who waits an hour before doing makeup after skincare and my concealer was not staying. It was doing all sorts of funny things. My foundation or BB cream, same thing. I could not use any cream products when I was using this. So I had to change my makeup routine to nothing but powders for the duration of trying this product and it really ticked me off. If you are someone who is very minimalistic with makeup, you like your skincare, but you do not do any makeup on your under eye or use any sort of foundation products around that region, you can cream makeup products you can probably get away with this. But none of my cream makeup products played well with this. It prevented them from setting. And that is a no-go for me. I ended up using the Hourglass Veil and the Fit Me Loose Setting Powder on my face during my trial of this. I stayed away from my Revlon BB cream, I stayed away from my Makeup Forever HD foundation, and I had to stay away from my NYX concealer and my Boing Industrial number two concealer. None of them worked well with this product. So beware, if you have the solution to using this product with your cream products, I would love to hear. 
it just did not work for me and it was disappointing because out of all the products this is what I have the most of still you saw how little I have to use so it would definitely last me longer than even the masks which <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna do with. so that is the brighten and deep puff and did it brighten and deep puff all it did was draw attention to my under eye because it was very shiny kind of like I showed you on my hand it accentuated any kind of difference in my under eye area and I don't tend to have really bags on my under eye but it, if I was you know first thing in the morning whatever it would really just emphasize differences in depth in in my under eye profile it just it was just weird Let's move on. <laughs> so I'm not a big fan. Not a big fan. Am I going to keep using it? Yeah. Days where I'm not wearing any makeup and I, I look relatively rested because I don't think it does very much as far as depuffing. I can use it because I like the fact that it's an under eye cream that I can wear during the day. But that's about it. And I do wear makeup most days. So I think that would be, I think the days would be few and far between. But I could see myself take that product, for example, on vacation if I just want something for the under eye. The next one that I want to talk about, which probably would have come before the <laughs> under eye uh, brighten and deep puff cream, is this one, which is the Mega Mushroom Relief and Resilience Advanced Face Serum. And just like the toner, the soothing treatment lotion, I really like this. I was very happy to keep using this over and over again. It felt like a very nice morning serum. It felt hydrating. It felt soothing. It felt good on my skin. And I did not, again, didn't like the smell. I, I thought it was, it smelled like to me the ingredients it needed to smell like to be a, a useful serum. And so I liked it. I, I guess I'm a fan of the Mega Mushroom line. Again, other than masks. I'll stop. I'll stop talking about masks. I have two moisturizers to talk about. So the next product I have here is the Energy Boosting Gel Moisturizer. And it has a very pleasant smell. It's, it's an orangey smell. And I think that's where the energy boosting comes from is the scent is very nice and pleasant and kind of wakes you up in the morning as far as felt really nice to me. It kind of made me think of the Ula Truth Serum, Ula Henriksen uh, Truth Serum, because it has an orangey smell. I The energy boosting, I was like, okay, I think it's the smell more than anything else. It is a gel moisturizer. It felt very nice on the skin. It worked really nicely with the Advanced Face Serum that is from the Mega Mushroom line. So I can see how those two were, th that they, didn't have any trouble origins that is mixing the ginseng with the mega mushroom line I enjoyed it is it earth shattering no I am fine with a gel moisturizer I have dry skin but it's not overly dry so that was fine and out of the two moisturizers that I got to try in all those trial sizes this one was definitely my preference now for another moisturizer and story time this is the a Perfect World SPF 40 Age Defense Moisturizer with white tea. And this moisturizer, it does say keep out of eyes. <laughs> so yeah, story time. I want to just identify that an SPF moisturizer, you want to be relatively generous with it. I'm not talking about slathering it all over your skin. I'm just talking about you want to use a little bit more than you would maybe if you're sparing another moisturizer. Because you want the SPF benefits, that's the whole point of using an SPF moisturizer. Well, this moisturizer leaves you looking like a slick, oily mess, unless you do a lot with primer and face makeup to dampen that effect and it was it's not pretty one of the days i wore this i had a morning coffee appointment with a uh, fellow uh, writer and an independent worker if you will and i knew that i looked like an oily mess and it was it was just not a fun morning and what made it worse 
I did get some of this in my eye and holy cow, it was so awful, so disturbing. It bothered me for a couple of hours. I couldn't stop my eye from watering, which was, was, was a good thing it was watering because it was getting rid of what was irritating it. There's some sun protection properties definitely in this moisturizer, but I will say user beware on this one. Uh, for how it leaves your skin looking after application and also keep a wide berth from around the eye. Do not use it anywhere near the eye. It is extremely painful. Does it do the trick? I have no doubt. It's just not a pleasant experience on a number of levels as I've just shared with you. So that's it as far as my Origins products. Let me just bring out the recommended products one last time. Now these are products that I would actually consider purchasing, not just the products that I would consider using again. In order of preference, the first one is the Soothing Treatment Lotion. Really enjoyed this one. Next up on the list is the Advanced Face Serum really nice product. If this is a reasonably priced product, I would do the drink up intensive overnight sleeping mask. I enjoyed the experience. It was very pleasant. And finally, if I could find this moisturizer for half off, I would consider using again, but I have a feeling it's a little bit out of my preferred price range for daytime moisturizers. I tend to use a lot more of my, call it beauty budget, in moisturizers that are for nighttime where I know that I can have a moisturizer that is really working on my skin for the day versus, or for the night versus uh, considerations for the day because whatever moisturizer I wear in the morning, I just need, my, my main concern is that it plays well with everything else that I'm going to be putting on my face. That's it. A long video on my Origins experience. Again, over 45 days, so I feel like I really know what the heck I'm talking about uh, when it comes to these products and my own impressions of the Origins line. And I would love to hear your experience with the Origins product line. Do you love these products? Do you not like them? Have you, well, obviously you would have tried them. Let me know what you think because I would really appreciate learning from your experience as well as far as what did and did not work for you from this line and why. That's all I have to offer. I thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. But for now, take care. Thank you.